uh, we'll build a better site for like five bucks. <laughs> and the funny thing is you can, because you're going to get to build the sites. It's just the wasteful, the wasteful spending um, that, that, that takes place with it. But um, I feel your pain for those that are paying those high premiums. I'm blessed that I don't have to be on medication or have to take that stuff. But, you know, my mother takes medication. My sister has, you know, some some issues. She's taking medication. Um, and, and luckily, they're able to afford. But there's a lot of people that just simply can't afford. And um, I just really hope that there are some good senators that will be able to get this thing expediated so, so, sooner rather than later. Because don't you think that Americans deserve that? They deserve it. And, you know, you worked hard for it all your life, and then you you can't even be able to afford medication. And this is the simplest thing. And, I mean, it is a choice, too. It's a matter of life or death. It's a matter of life or death. A paratrooper was killed fighting ISIS in Iraq, um, is ID'd. He's identified, finally, this is a story, First Lieutenant Weston C. Lee was killed after an improvised explosive device detonated during a patrol outside of Mosul this past Saturday. He was the third Army soldier killed battling ISIS last week after two other soldiers died during a firefight in eastern Afghanistan. The 25-year-old Lee from Bluffton, Georgia, was an infantry officer assigned to the 1st Battalion, 30, that's the 325th Infantry Regiment, 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 82nd Airborne Division. 1st Lieutenant Wesley was a extraordinary young man, an officer. He was exactly the type of leader that our paratroopers deserve. Colonel Pat Work, the commander of the 2nd Brigade Combat Team, say that real fast, said in a statement that our sincere condolences and prayers are with his family and friends during this difficult time. Lee joined the Army in March of 2015 after completing the Infantry Basic Officers Leaders Course and was assigned to the 2nd Brigade 82nd Airborne Division as a platoon leader. His first deployment to Iraq was in December 2016. Uh, We definitely pray for his family. That's the price, folks. Living in America, protecting our freedoms abroad uh, from from enemies that we fight, ISIS, Al Qaeda, still the threat, folks. Gangs, lots of lots of problems that we have, and we definitely need to be vigilant. And for those that are serving, we salute you. Thank you. We could never say thank you enough. Um, we do remember you, and uh, any time that you can do something nice for a vet. Somebody that's either, you know, in, in military, give up your seat. If you're on a plane, do the right thing. Um, cup, cup of coffee, help somebody with their bag, anything like that. Just a small th- reminder, um, a small thought um, of those that uh, serve so courageously. And um, a lot of times don't come back, like we just heard from this young officer, 25 years old. And what always gets me about folks that join the military, they hear this. That doesn't discourage them. Oh, they pray for their brothers, but it, it, it they fight. They remember them in memory. They go out and they continue to do it, and they would do it again. And this 25-year-old, he, if he didn't die, he'd be back at again um, with limbs trying to get back into the service. You know, they get prosthesis put on and they want to go out and they want to serve again. It's just because it's in their heart to do it because they understand, they get it, the price of freedom that we all enjoy here in our country. And I wish that there was more patriotism. And thank God there are patriots, but more of it and a resurgence of patriotism in our country. I wish more people would know our founding fathers, understand the price that was paid. The wars we fought, the blood that was shed, and a lot of that stuff is just not really uh, front and center, unfortunately, in a lot of schools. And I wish that there was more patriotism in schools. Instead, a lot of schools, what they like to do is they like to take the Pledge of Allegiance out of the school. And that's not a good thing. Yeah, there's schools that still do. 
And thank God that they actually do. But, you know, teach your son and daughter, teach your grandkids, tell them the stories. You uh, had parents that served in the war. If you did, tell them some of the, some of the stories, share with them, um, pass on their uh, their legacy. Because if you don't tell them, they're not going to know, and they need to know these stories and why it's so important um, to go out and serve our country. And uh, maybe you don't go out to a war zone, but in some way you serve your community, you serve your country in some way. And we have firefighters and EMT. We have police officers. Another one actually shot in the head today. Uh, Our men in blue taking a big sacrifice for protecting our streets. But uh, service is very, very, very important. And I try to have an attitude of gratitude for all of these folks that do these things each and every day. Thank them, most of all. Folks, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, being a part of our broadcast. If you like the show, please share the show. Tell somebody about For the People. If your local radio station doesn't carry it, you can share it with them just simply by writing them a letter or calling them. And believe me, it will go a long way because in radio or television, you know, one letter represents 100 or they consider it a 1,000 from one person writing. So you'd be surprised you might get some results. Just share the website at ForThePeopleShow.com. That's ForThePeopleShow.com. We're 100% listener supported. Your donations keep us on the air each and every day. Keith Allen saying all the best. May God bless. 